Well, I think uh, I had a lot of help growing up. I, com I played competitive sports uh, all through high school and college, and I certainly learned that before you can be a leader of any kind, you got to learn how to be an effective member of a team. Uh, so I learned a lot of, about that early on. I was also involved in the scouting world, the Boy Scouts of America. Oh, me and too, yeah, great organization. So in my route to Eagle Scout, which I'm still very proud of, uh, I learned these things called values. Mm -hmm. In the Boy Scout, it's called the Scout Law. That's right. There's 12 of them, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Remember them all in I order. remember them, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but it really, it's kind of like, you know, the Lord's Prayer or the Pledge of Allegiance. You okay. learn to recite these That's things. Right. You don't really necessarily know what they all mean. But in the Boy Scout world, I started learning, and you practice those. You recite them, and then you start practicing what trustworthy means. So I think as a kid growing up in the scouting, I learned a lot about character because mm -hmm. I think the Boy Scouts, among the many things they do is they, they help develop boys and girls now into leaders and people of character. Absolutely. So that was the fun part of growing up. Uh, and my dad, I think I was always admired my dad. My dad was a captain in World War II. He landed on the beaches of Normandy during that war. He got out of the service after the war. But I think I always admired in my dad uh, what character was about and what leadership was about. And so those youthful experiences helped me grow into, uh, I think, how to be competitive and how to, how to learn how to lead. I think my eureka moment in my life came when I was a young captain. Uh, I was four years out of West Point. I was stationed in Korea, and I was assigned to a position called Company Command. That is the ultimate position for a captain in the Army, and that is where you learn uh, if you're going to be successful in the Army or not. So a company commander is like the president of a company. I had 220 soldiers. I was assigned to a place called Camp Red Cloud, Korea, it was 35 miles from the demilitarized zone. I had 220 soldiers. My boss was two hours away. I had a wartime mission. I was assigned to this organization, and I immediately had to figure out how to develop a trusting relationship with those soldiers who worked for me and all of those that I worked for. So it was a sort of a frightening experience for me. It probably was the first time in my military career where I genuinely felt and feared failure. Mm. I knew if I wasn't successful there, my military career would take a nosedive. And I was not a guy who was easy to ask for help. I always figured, I'm going to figure this out. I will tough it out. I will brute force it out. I will figure it out. So I wondered if I would be successful. I wondered if I would be the leader that everybody wanted me to be. I wondered if we would accomplish our mission. I wondered if I could develop those relationships where people that I supported would trust me and enable me and inspire me and help me. Um, so at the end of the day, at the end of the year, the one-year assignment, I was successful. And I will tell you I was successful because I had a lot of help. Mm -hmm. I had marvelous officers and soldiers of all ranks who just wanted to do and wanted to be inspired and led. Uh, and there was a marvelous experience for me that helped me be successful only by the sheer success of all my guys and gals doing great work. In the Army, leadership is fundamental. It is a fundamental goal for every service member in the Army. The Army is an up or out organization. Mm -hmm. You either get promoted or you're gone. Yeah. And so we don't have a succession strategy per se. Our whole culture is based on help, uh, helping develop guys and gals below us to get promoted. And I found that to be a, a wonderful, resonated well with me. Mm. It hit my heart and soul. Mm. Now, it's for others to judge on whether I was effective at helping them, but I certainly was passionate about it. Uh, and every rank I achieved and every promotion and every new job I got, I got the opportunity to do it again. And I never got tired of it. That's it was just wonderful. Well, it was June of 2010 when a Army chaplain gave me the book, Halftime, written by Bob Buford, a big Texas businessman and longtime associate of Peter Drucker. 
And this book is all about the sports analogy of being in the locker room at halftime. You had a game plan for the first half of your life. Mm -hmm. What is the game plan for the second half? How are you going to transition from success to significance? So my wife and I both read that book, and it really helped me get my head in the game of how I was going to be significant. And upon reflection in the Army, one of the most joyful things that I experienced in my 32 years was this development of people. I had so many who helped me and I was able to help so many others. How could I take that mm -hmm. and help a whole other world in the business world who didn't have the experience I did? I would love to be able to share the old adage, if I only knew then what I know now. I was so much smarter, you know, after I retired from the Army and I just wish I had learned a lot of that sooner. How can I help that cause? Yeah, my dad uh, really is the inspiration behind my youth uh, going into the Army. Uh, he died he, uh, when I was a battalion commander. I was a lieutenant colonel in For Fort Hood, Texas, and he was uh, unable to attend the rest of my military career, but he's watching, Yeah, and I'm doing it for him. I know he'd be proud of me, and I just want to make him proud.